Good day and welcome to, uh, well, Talking Politics, Road to Osadebe Avenue, Road to, you know, Edo Guba 2024. So much to talk about with so many, so many athletes lined up jostling for that position. And of course, we have a frontline, uh, you know, governorship aspirant under the Labour Party, uh, Professor Ebo Sonny Eremosele. Uh, just yesterday when he picked his form in the National Secretariat of the Labour Party, he made it clear that his priority is management of humanity and resources. And of course, he promised that he will take the Labour Party to Osadebe House come the election slated for 21st of September 2024. Let's quickly take a look on how that happened and then you find out where he is at the moment. Joining the race to change the narrative in the state, the state is crippled. The state of Edo is the precarious situation and the Edo state need to rise and work. They say the charity begins at home. Uh, I've done a lot of things in my state. I've invested university in my state. I've been involved in uh, ski programs. I've solved national problems also. So, I am committed to the development of my state at the state. So, the difference between me and them is the RISE group and the RISE group. So, I belong to the RISE. I am qualified to flag the flag. The reason I'm saying we should have equity, I'm from Ishan, is a central. We've not produced a governor for a very long time, but the sympathy is there. People want that. And, but not just because of that, but the argument is, do we have uh, uh, the system in place? The Liberal Party have a system uh, to manage the, the election. So I believe that I am qualified and uh, I'm not bad about the zone, but equity it should be efficient. Yeah, that is actually to show that he's actually in this race. We're talking about a businessman, a philanthropist, an educationist. He also doubles as a missionary and now a politician. Let's meet uh, the frontline Liberal Party governorship aspirant for the Edo Guba 2024, Professor Sony Ebo Eremusele. Very good day and welcome. Thank you. A pleasure. Why good are you in this you. race? Thank you very much. Uh, people have brought always uh, that, asked that question several times. Why are you on this race? I'm on this race because of the precarious situation of the state. Mm. The people, uh, you know the people have been in pains. The poverty level is alarming. Mm. The environment is not conducive and the resources is not enhanced. And there is poverty in the land. And you know when there is poverty, People look unto men. When men fail, they look unto God and they pray. And like in the book of Isaiah 6, verse 8, Isaiah said, I heard a voice. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I say, Here I am, send me. So I am here to solve the problem of poverty. I am here to attend to the people. The people have been neglected. The, com the relationship between the governors and the people. It's so wide, and so people need attention. And they know that uh, I have been involved in developing people, skill development. I've solved national problems. I've solved community problems. And they feel I should come around this time around to solve the problem of Edo State. And that is why I hear to that, that I am out 
to solve the problem so that they can rise and begin to work. So that they can rise, I understand that is your slogan for your campaign, Rise. Tell us about it. Thank you. A rise uh, is about four letters. I will mean to rescue the state and restore the state to the original plan and the dignity of the people of Edo State. As you are aware, Edo called the big heart. Edo not the fear, Edo not the carry last. But today, the dignity of the people has been reduced to nothing. And uh, the poverty affecting these people has reduced the people that everybody wants to jackpot, they want to live. And the environment is not conducive for them. So, and that's why, letter arrow is to rescue the people, rescue the state, and restore to the original plan. That is an original plan for the state. You know, the plan of development. People's development, environmental development, resource development. That is missing today. Then, we need to improve the living standard of the people. The people today have nothing. The uh, level of poverty is so poor. Let me shock you. This morning I got an alert, uh, a, a test message. I just needed 2,000 naira to buy food. For three days I've not eaten. You have reduced that life human being to nothing. He retired 2018. And there is no food to eat for three days. I feel like crying, to be very frank. I feel like crying. So we need to come back and restore the man back and improve the standard of living. Food is of necessity. Food is key. So let people eat first. Let them have life. And that is why I said we need to increase the living standard of the people. We need to secure the people and secure the environment. The social syndrome today, I want to jackpot. Everybody wants to live. Nobody wants to live there because opportunities are not there for them. They don't have livelihood. There are, the policies does not, uh, 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 does not uh, uh, favor them. So they want to jackpot. They want to live. So I want to secure them back. If you imagine, Big Gate, Donald Trump, uh, Big Gate, Elon Musk, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they are in America. If we have such people developed and they are in the state, they don't jackpot, what happened? to the development of the place. So we need to secure this place and secure the environment. When the environment is conducive, when the environment is attractive, when the environment is safe for people to do their business, for people to live, to go to their farm, for people to be able to take care of their lives, the people will remain there. They will live. How many people want to leave America? If you ask anybody today, even outside the door, in Nigeria, they are selling their assets. You see, former bank heads of managers, they are doing slavery job in America, in Europe, in France, all over the world. So we want to secure the people back and make sure they are back and remain to develop the land. We want to secure the environment. We want to empower the people. When people are empowered, they will contribute. They want to add life. And that is why I have the agenda that called RISE, Movement Against Poverty. Mm. It's interesting. Very interesting. But how are you going to do that? Are you going to rely with the money coming from the center or are you going to devise, devise uh, another means? Thank you. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm aware of the, the huge debt, debt in the state. Mm. I did analysis last time. Every Nigerian, including a like is owing 400,000 Naira. The born children are owing. So we are still borrowing to even survive now so we are going to devise a means mm. to create a neighboring environment develop skills so that these people can innovate and bring solutions and bring jobs we create jobs in the environment the agriculture is there the logistics look at a door road is very strategic in nigeria you go to the north you go to the south you go to the south to, to the west through a door state there are a lot of opportunities there to create and generate revenue. You look at the culture, uh, the culture, hospitality. Our best are talented. Have we been able to harness them and use that platform to create work that is there to create businesses? The agriculture. Mm. And those states have the most fertile land in Nigeria. I have research on that. Have we been able to cultivate our land? No. So 
the problem we're having is not that there is no money, but how to create the business that will generate internal generated revenue and make people to be involved to create more money is the problem. So as an entrepreneur, I am going to create jobs opportunity for the people and I will generate this revenue. Then I'm going to call the cost of governance. Like I've told some of my friends, a lot of people, I don't mind. I will even give my salary. I mean, I don't want to earn salary. I don't want. I need people who want to sacrifice for the state. I mean that. I can do that. For me to invest billion in my state, university. You know the cost of university? Who have done that? The currently today, 60% of the students are on scholarship. I did that. Because I'm interested in the people. When the people developed and they're able to create opportunities and create businesses, there will be resources, there will be growth in the land, <coughs> and you can enjoy the environment. Why are people running to, uh, running to America, uh, now the, the location they're going to today? They want to go to Canada. Everybody wants to go to Canada. Why do they want to go to Canada? Because there are opportunities. So we can do that in a do state. A do state is blessed and a do state have a lot to offer. And I'm ready to change the narrative. So creating job opportunity for the people, ensuring that the environment is conducive for them, and we have the resources that will bring about wealth. I can tell you, a door will be that a door that we used to call the, the, original, original, the original plan. The original plan. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope that you can actually take the state back to its original plan. You, you are yet to say something about the rural community. Don't you have plan for them? Oh. That is very interesting. Mm. The rural plan is number one agenda that I have. Why are people living the rural communities? Where you have arable land, they can cultivate and, you know, uh, farm and bring their produce to the city. That is why I took a university to the village. When I brought the university, the road to the university wasn't tied. You understand? It wasn't tied. So I am interested in the rural area. That's what we call the comparative advantage. Every part of a do state is blessed. Mm. Whether you call it the city or the villages. Mm. So the villages will be called town tomorrow. And that's why I said in my program, I'm going to have new cities. Mm. We create new cities. Every local government should be a city that will expand tomorrow and become a city of its own. So I have plans. We're going to take businesses to the communities, and that's what we're going to do. Wow, that that would be great. That um, will um, stop the rural urban migration, migration then from urban to to abroad. And that, <laughs> is, <laughs> that is what you see. I have a program that is called brain recirculation, not brain drain. What we are having currently today is brain drain, and when you are taking the best brain out, what is left? Left mediocre. You have those that are not interested. That's why you see lawlessness everywhere, and so. Brain drain is an issue in the state, and I'm bringing brain recirculation, whereby the people you can be exposed, and then you still contribute. So when you have the skill today, you know, like they say, I do people that are everywhere in the world. If we have the environment, take care of the environment, they will bring more resources, and they will want to come back home, and that's what we call brain recirculation. You can go and work. I've been in Port Harcourt, I've been in Lagos, but I'm back to my village. In the right, com my community where the university is, is my home, my village, not where is that? Irwa in Idumabi, hmm. in Edo State. Wow, that's in the village. That's Edo Central. Edo Central. So that brings us to the to the issue of zoning. What is your party doing about about the zoning? Thank you very much. You know that uh, my party is a party that. Uh, so passionate about uh, equity, mm. justice, mm. and fairness. Mm. And uh, they want to give equal opportunity to everybody. Mm. And that is what the party believes in. Mm. So, whether you are from the north, from the south, from the west, from the, uh, from the south, central, and the north. But the sympathy there mm. in the state is the governorship should go to the eastern central. To go to the Eastern uh, Edo Centre, where they have not produced governors for years. And uh, the North has produced the current governor today. It's from the Edo 
not south south. So the same the center has not produced. That is why they are saying Edo is one. Eastern hmm. Bedo, Edo Besa, the Belize are the same people in the ESA. So they are brothers and they are sisters. So there is no controversy even about that. So Labour Party is playing it, but at the end of the day, who is Labour Party going to feature? What do you believe? What do you want as an aspirant? Do you want it zoned to the central or it should be for all to, to you know, you know, just so for the, for the position? Well, as a human being, mm. I would have wished it's zoned there. Mm. But the system is not about zoning like today. We're going to have indirect primaries mm. in the election. So who is coming out? So the SM people are presenting someone who should be able to match anybody from any part of the state. And so we are all qualified, but who is the best? Ramosele is the best. Mm. <laughs> Professor Ramosele. Yeah, <clears throat> so much has been said you know, on this discussion with uh, the frontline governorship aspirant under the Labour Party, Professor Ebo Eremosale, you know, uh, coming out to say, hey, Labour Party, as we uh, get towards the primary election, it has to be Professor Eremosale. Now, let's look at an issue that is bothering everyone, including the president, which is insecurity. It is there also in, in Edo states. Uh, coupled with the fact that there are some roads that are not motorable, especially in your axis, in between the Epoma and the Benin axis, it, 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 I mean, you can spend almost five, six hours before uh, you get to uh, your destination. So with these two side by side, how are you going to tackle it? Thank you. Uh, the issue of insecurity first, before talking about the roads. Yes. And uh, that is why I said the state is crippled. The no, state is no, no, no. Why no, I say it's no, people? No, look at it now. Booming. Uh, it's and booming, but booming. no. They when you say when it's are paid uh, and um, you know uh, no, no one is old, the uh, pensioners are high, you know. Some what, is the, what is the life? Uh, the so, so, so it's not crippled. No, every <laughs> the life. No, when I say crippled, what I mean mm. the human aspect of it. Yes. The life is not good. Look, the environment, the roads, and insecurity is an issue. The resources is an issue. That's why I said we have not been able to actually harness and develop. So that's why I classified as said it's crippled state. It's like the man uh, that is begging for what is happening is palliative. So it's just palliative. It's not the major um, development. That's what I see. But let's go back to the subject matter. The insecurity. The insecurity is what? We are focusing on the girl, the killers and all the rest. The major insecurity is the stomach. Why are people involved in uh, uh, in uh, crimes? crimes yes. You see, the crime is not only gone. The drugs and so many other things are, are going on in the state. Why? Because uh, they they have no alternative uh, choice to make, and they decide to go to that. So I will focus on creation of job to secure the people. I say people must be secured. They look at the environment. We have what it takes. The two people fought to occupy their land. And so the kings, everybody will be involved. The local government will be involved because they are starved of resources. That is why they cannot take care of the environment. What does it take to, 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 to have uh, uh, drones, two drones in each local government to monitor the terrain? Do we have the resources to get? Yeah, we have the resources. The money for the local government, where is it? Go to police stations there. There's no light in that compound. I, I was there. So the, when the people are not being taken care of, so I'm going to rejig the security architecture in the states. The chiefs, the kings know what to do. Security is local. If you go to other countries, you look at the people, mm. the environment. We know ourselves. So the kings, the local government, mm. the councillors, the police, they must be involved. They all must be involved. Mm. They must be involved. And so I'm going to develop a system and a model that will get them involved. So every business that will be cited in that location will be CGP. Mm -hmm. Community, government, and private. Wow. So when you have that kind of business strategy, the people will be involved. They will secure the environment. Mm -hmm. That is one of the strategies I'm going to use. Then on roads? On the roads! Will you rely on the federal government? 
Why should I wait for the federal government? Why should I wait for them? I will start it and inform the government the opportunities. What are the business opportunities? If you look at the, Edo State, is very strategic. You move all the goods to Lagos. You move to Lagos back to the north, to the east. I will present to the government, the federal government, look, look at what you have. These are your benefits. These are the consequences. I can tell you they will collaborate with me. Mm -hmm. But if they refuse, I will take the advantage. Mm -hmm. I will get the place fixed. The people, the citizens are forced. And those people are passing through the road mm -hmm. before the foreigners are coming to pass through the road. So why should the people suffer? From the door, from the Asia, down to Benin. It's not only Asia, you have uh, deployable uh, roads. Go to Benin City today. Well, there are no roads. When it's raining, the floods are everywhere. So we're going to look at it holistically and then developed a strategy to address the road network. It is achievable. When you call down the cost of governance, mm. you put those money there. And you think your party members will allow you to cut down the cost of governance? You know, most times these things are, are caused by, you know, party faithfuls and say, no, 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 you have to, it has to be that way. So our time is flying fast. Uh, let me take you on two very quick issues. One, would you allow local government autonomy? Thank you very much. Straight away. Yes. It is there. It's part of the strategy to develop the, the state. You have, it's a structure in the, in the country. You have the federal, the state, and the local government. Mm -hmm. That is why people are leaving the local, going to the city. Mm -hmm. When they get to the city, they look, go to national. So we are going to give the 100%. And I will make sure they have their no interference. No interference. Interference in the sense taking their money. But yes. I will monitor them because when you give the resources, you have to look at how the resources is being utilized. So I will ensure they have their objective set, what is their vision, what they intend to achieve, and then they put the resources there and then they account for it. So when there is accountability, then you can reduce fraud. I will lead by example. I will steal the state money, so you will steal the local government money. So we we'll put a system in place. I'm best part in management and quality control. So we we'll develop a system that will have a culture of development. Let's let's serve the people first. Let's give to the people. It's like a waiter in a restaurant. When you come in, what do you want? How can we make you happy? How can we make you enjoy this space? So they'll give you everything. Customer satisfaction is key. The people that have called us, given us that mandate to serve them, we should serve the people. So we shouldn't take the money. That is where the problem is. So if the money in the local government is used for the purpose, the money in the state is used for the state, I can tell you the place will be developed. Mm. I support that 100%. So you can develop the community and people will remain there. All right. In, in one minute before we go, uh, a bit of what you have in terms of bursary for Edo State student, whether they're in Benin or whether they're in Edo State or outside Edo State, a bit of what you have for them in terms of bursary. I just mentioned to you that I gave 250 million scholarship to Edo people. That's to show how committed I am to education and skill development. I'm going to give them that bursary scholarship through an arranged program. You are aware, like you mentioned, the state is indebted. I'll call up my friend. We have a foundation for bursary. The government will contribute. The people of Edo will contribute. To the development of our people and that is going to be my strategy thank you so very much for your time it was on the program uh, so much has been said uh, your plan cuts across every sphere of uh, human endeavor you are going to tackle head down unemployment you will tackle uh, the what, what we call the job as syndrome that will be uh, so much for students in terms of bursary the i mean infrastructure you said clearly that you would not wait for the federal government you would devise means to address dilapidated infrastructure especially roads and of course when it comes to the issue of local government they will be on their own yours will just be to supervise we hope that happens thank you so very much thank you very much yeah. it's my pleasure it has been with the frontline governorship aspirant under the Labour Party, Professor Sonny Ebo Eremosele.
Thank you so much once again. It's this is pleasure. where we wrap it up. Road to Edo 2024.